I'm really um, pleased to uh, introduce Dr. Kaya Evans. Um, Kaya is a, an OT um, by original training, but now a researcher and lecturer. She's an autism CRC project leader, program um, uh, manager at Telcon Kids, um, and a lecturer at School of Allied Health at the University of Western Australia. Kaya's also the project coordinator, um, was also the project coordinator of Australia's first national guideline for the assessment and diagnosis um, of autism, um, which was released in, in late 2018. And ha having played a, a small role in that myself, um, I have to say that Kaya was really the, um, the, the heart and soul behind that. So Kaya, um, 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 please do ask any questions about that as well. Um, today, Kaya will be talking to you about the work that's been happening since the release of the National Guideline to ensure its recommendations are implemented by clinicians and health professionals uh, across the country. Um, it's gonna be really interesting to see. Thanks Kaya, take it away. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, thank you everyone for coming along today. Um, I would also like to acknowledge that I, I'm also on Noongar land over here in Perth and pay my acknowledgements to the Elders past, present and emerging. So today I would like to talk about the National Guideline Information, Implementation Toolkit, which is one of our big projects that we have worked on since the guideline. And time permitting, I'll also talk about some of the other implementation activities we have undertaken. Um, so when we published the guideline back in 2018, in two of the documents that we released at the time, so the main guideline um, had a section at the end called practice points. So they were activities that we were recommending to occur beyond um, the assessment and diagnostic process. And um, today, particularly, I will be talking about our recommendations for dissemination of the guideline. Um, we also had another supporting document that some of you may be familiar with, which is the administrative and technical report. And we had a dissemination plan that we outlined there. Some of the activities that we indicated that we would like to focus on were producing some fact sheets and explainer videos and also a self-evaluation checklist for clinical services. We were very fortunate um, that the Autism CRC had a, was able to negotiate a collaboration with the Department of Social Services, and that allowed us to develop an implementation toolkit. And there were four components that we were contracted to deliver as part of that. There was a website, a series of fact sheets, a series of explainer videos, and a baseline evaluation and audit tool. So I'll take you through um, and introduce you to each of those resources in a moment. So they were delivered just over two years after the original guideline um, in December 2020. In terms of the team that developed those, it was a combination of the marketing and communications team at Autism CRC and several of us at Telethon Kids Institute. Um, so I've just got um, Kelly, Sally, Jason and Liz from the CRC and myself and Andrew at Telethon Kids. We also, as part of the process, had some community input. Um, so we had um, a member of the autism community and an autistic adult who is also a parent of a child on the autism spectrum um, involved in the process of developing the resources designed for autistic adults and caregivers. And we also access some of the clinical community at Clinic Kids, which is part of the Telephone Kids Institute. Um, particularly, we had input from allied health professionals from speech pathology, clinical psychology and occupational therapy backgrounds. Um, and they provided input on the clinician focus tools. So I thought what I would do is just provide a bit of an introduction as to what is on there and the types of features. Um, so the website um, has three main face uh, pages associated with it. So I'll go through each of the three. The first one you can see um, the top area, the top circle that I've got there on the left um, is the guideline. And this is where you're able to enter in your email address that you've previously registered with the Autism CRC to be able to access the national guideline documentation. Um, so I've just got some examples of, there's a little bit of an administrative process, um, but that's in place so that we can good, have good web metrics of um, what people are accessing so that we can ensure that future um, resources that we develop are in line with what um, clinicians are interested in. 
Um, and it also means that we can capture some information about who is accessing the guideline um, and to make sure that we've got contact details so that when there's updates, we can let our community of clinicians know. Um, so there's a few steps here on the left hand side to guide you through. Um, and then you've got on the, um, here in, we've got um, circled the national guideline. There's also the implementation toolkit on the other side. So that allows you to go through to the original documents that were published in 2018. And the implementation toolkit allows you to go straight to the recent um, additional documents. Um, and then you can see at the side, there's different links for the, um, for the different documents. The next tab on the website is for the community. So we can see here on the left that there are resources aimed at parents and caregivers and also resources aimed for adults who are undergoing an assessment. Along with links to the resources, there's also some frequently asked questions. So you just click on each of those and um, it opens up the text underneath those. And once you click through to either the parents or the adult services, you can see yeah, um, that there's similar um, but slightly different information on each of those. You can either click on the play button to re watch the video um, or you can, as illustrated here, you can click um, onto the small image of the fact sheet and go straight through to that. We then have the third tab, which is the clinician resources. So we've got um, information about learning resources, um, so that's where we've got the, um, the fact sheets and the videos that you can click through to um, using the same format as on the previous slide. There's also the implementation tools. So that's where you can get the baseline evaluation and audit tool or the different templates and forms that were published with the original guideline. And then there's a little bit more information um, drawn out from the guideline around the um, the training requirements and expertise required to undertake autism related assessments. Um, so that's the, the website. Um, so as you drill through to that, as I mentioned, there's the fact sheets. So we have two community fact sheets for adults and parents and caregivers. And we also have six versions for clinicians. So the clinicians um, versions go into a little bit more detail. And what we've done there is divided the guideline um, into six sections of um, according to um, grouped according to um, topic. So we have some background information about called setting a national standard. We then have the six guiding principles detailed. Um, it then goes on to explaining the assessment process and um, how the components fit together and then separate fact sheets each on the comprehensive needs assessment, which consists of assessment of functioning and a medical evaluation, and then the diagnostic evaluation, um, commencing with a single clinician, and then if required, going on to a consensus team diagnosis. The final fact sheet is around the important considerations so that the assessment process can be tailored um, to the individual and their circumstances. With the, guide, the fact sheets, we focused on keeping them um, quite brief as an introduction to the guideline. So they're all ranging between two to three pages. We can see here some of the features um, that are common across the guidelines. So on the left, I'm um, just highlighting that there's text context, text content. Um, and what we've aimed to do is whilst preserving the, um, the rigour and the intention of the recommendations, simplifying the language to make it more access accessible for a quick read. We also have, as we can see here, um, quotes and um, key text um, popping out with the green formatting. We have some photogra photographs to illustrate points. We have flow diagrams to explain processes. And then we've got certain icons to represent particular topics. Just to make the, the content easily accessible um, and so that the reader can rapidly understand the content um, and be engaged in the process. Um, we also have a corresponding explainer video for each of the, um, the fact sheets. So again, two community and six clinician versions on the same topics, and they all range um, between four and five minutes. 
and we've got several different features that we've used in there. So sometimes we have this navy um, background with um, some images to the side and Andrew talking. Um, we also sometimes have some illustrations um, throughout the video, um, either in um, more this animated colour version or in silhouette um, format to help to illustrate the points. Sometimes we use a variety of icons to get across um, the information along with um, text points. And then at the end, we've got further information and links um, so that people know what they can access next. The final um, output is the baseline evaluation and audit tool, and that's available for clinicians to use as an Excel document. And our intention around that is for individuals or teams to, um, before they commence um, implementing the national guideline, to have a look at what they're doing already. So we have a front page here where we have um, some data that feeds through from other aspects um, in the other worksheets in the uh, file um, to give an overall snapshot in terms of where people are up to, um, in terms of how many recommendations they're currently um, adhering to. Um, and we also have um, a snapshot of their, their current status. Um, we then have a series, um, hopefully you can see that in the image, a series of tabs for each of the different sections of recommendations. Um, at the top, we have some summary statistics that pull through from, um, from the spreadsheet. And what we, uh, what we have there is clinicians can go through and um, provide a rating using the drop down of their current adherence with the, guide, with the, um, the recommendation, each of the recommendations in turn. Um, they can make some notes about their current status talk about um, actions that they would like to take and allocate an internal deadline and who is responsible. So it becomes a project management tool that later on down the track, the track they can come back to and audit how they've improved over time. So what sort of impact have we seen from the tool? So as I mentioned earlier, the tools were released on the 9th of December. Um, so this graph at the top um, tells a really nice story. We can see um, these are the downloads of the, the guideline after its original release. So we can see um, in the first few days there was a, a rapid increase and we've got a steady growth over the two years or so um, after it was published. And then we have a nice little upkick um, at the end um, that shows the increase in downloads to the guideline after the implementation toolkit was released. Um, one of the, the stats that we look at is during that steady time, steady period there, we were looking at about 11 um, registrations for the guideline per day, and that jumped to 21 per day after the toolkit was launched. Um, one of the exciting things um, to see is um, it wasn't just people who um, had already downloaded the guideline um, that was, were accessing the toolkit we actually saw over 1,500 new contacts to the Autism CRC database after the um, toolkit was released. So that's a really positive indication that presenting the information in a more accessible way has allowed a greater range of people to um, access information about the guideline. Um, there's been over 10,000 accesses to the guideline resources um, since then. Um, each of the different pages, looking at around three to 800 views um, um, since, since the release um, and over, well over a thousand downloads of the baseline evaluation and audit tool. Um, we can see the, the pie graph on the side is, shows that the most popular resources have been um, around caregivers followed by autistic adult resources. Um, and then we have the assessment process um, being the next most popular, but also across the board, there's been a, a relatively good interest in all of the resources. We've also had some anecdotal feedback um, from people who have accessed the resources and that's been really positive as well. Um, so I'll just check in with how I'm going against my time. So, um, so I'm actually at time for the presentation. 
Did you, um, Andrew and Kelly, did you want me to talk about any of the other things or just, oh, Kelly has sent me a text message. Keep, keep going, Kaya. Keep going? <laughs> okay. So I'll just talk very briefly um, through um, the other implementation activities. Um, each, each would be a presentation in their own. Um, so in terms of the original de dissemination, other things that we did right at the beginning was release web resources such as case studies, templates, um, layperson descriptions, um, and the evidence tables. And we had our official launch at Parliament House. Um, since then, we've been involved with NHMRC. So we've got um, a case study on the NHMRC website, um, which I think after the TB uh, research case study, I think it's the second most downloaded one um, on their site now. We've conducted a national research study where we looked at validating, looking at the reliability and validity, um, along with consumer acceptability and clinical utility of to standardise this assessment of functioning tools, so the PEDICAT ASD and the Vineland 3. Um, the University Graduate Certificate of Autism Diagnosis has been fully integrated um, to, the guideline has been fully integrated into the content. And it was really nice to see in the Health Pathways um, in the first presentation today that, um, that our resources are also integrated into that too. Uh, we've got several um, PhD projects with University of WA and Curtin University underway at the moment. Um, so we have a NIM um, looking at the adherence with the guideline recommendations, along with the facilitators and barriers to implementing those. And that's due to, we're hoping that that will be submitted to a journal um, mid this year. We also have um, Emily and Maya at Curtin University looking at self-caregiver reported um, and clinician administered um, assessment tools based on the World Health Organization's International Classification of Functioning Health and Disability. So um, that they are set up to align with the national guideline recommendations. Uh, future things that we're hoping to be um, in, involved with. So um, DSS has set up an expert reference group uh, with the various different colleges and associations. Um, and over time, we're hoping that that will translate into clinical training networks and accreditation um, programs for clinicians involved in the process. Um, in the guideline, we advocated for funding for neurodevelopmental assessments. So we're hoping that over time that, um, that government um, funding will be available. Uh, for the various different aspects of the assessment process so that they can um, comprehensively and consistently be applied across the different systems. Um, and we're also working on a range of journal articles um, that will come out over time. Um, the last one here is um, some work that I'm hoping that we can do um, in the future with the Australian National University, looking at evaluating the implementation of the guideline um, in terms of how that impacts on practice.